In this video, we're going back to FS Realistic, the immersion and realism enhancement for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And today, the objective is to help you get to grips with profiles, where to get them, and how to use them. If you're not familiar with FS Realistic add on for Microsoft Flight Simulator, check out my previous video, link in the notes below. Welcome to the Sim Hanger, my name's Mark, thanks for watching, and let's get started. At the time of recording, I'm using version 2.0.2. This was only a minor update on version 2.0.1. Known issues include that cabin ambience cannot be heard in the PMDG 737, and it now has improved compatibility with VR. Turning now to the profiles, FS Realistic has six default profiles, and one of these profiles is allocated to the aircraft that you load by default. They are, by their very nature, generic profiles. If you make any changes to FS Realistic default profiles, well, then your changes will be saved, but they won't overwrite the default profiles. You can, of course, share your modified profile with others, or alternatively, load a profile that others have created. We'll be looking how to do that later in the video. Assuming you've got a default install, you'll be able to see those six profiles in the location shown on the screen. I would suggest you leave these profiles as default. Your user profiles are also stored, but in a separate location. FS Realistic will look for a profile that you've created first, and if it doesn't find it, well, it will then load one of the defaults, matching as best as it can. After installing FS Realistic and trying out your first profile, you may feel that some of the sounds and movements are exaggerated. And you'd be right, they are. And I guess this has been done by the developers to highlight the different features and options available. The reality of the situation is you're going to have to spend time making adjustments. And the quickest and easiest way to do this is build up a set of your own profiles with things as you want them. After that, it's a fairly quick process to tweak various settings to suit individual aircraft. What's that you say? You haven't got time? OK, well, I've done it for you. I've created a number of basic profiles and obviously using default aircraft so they're available to everybody. The range is by no means comprehensive, but it's a good starting point. It includes a single engine prop as well as a floats variant. Also, via the Cessna Caravan, I've created a turboprop. For all these small jets, I've chosen the FA-18 and the Airbus A320 for airliners. Twin props is also covered through the Baron G58, and I've also included a helicopter. This is the only one that's not default. I haven't included gliders, as I don't fly this type of aircraft. I'm using the Cessna 152 as an example of how to use and access these profiles. Please note that my profiles are set deliberately as very conservative, designed where necessary for you to make your own tweaks and adjustments to suit yourself. They've also been designed to suit VR users. Also note that all ambience and voice options have been disabled. You can, of course, turn these back on. Breathing is also turned off, unnecessary for VR users, and personally, I'm not a fan of it. Even at low levels, it's over-exaggerated. To get this profile, load up the 152, it'll load with the default, then go to the Profiles tab. To find third-party profiles, click on Profile Cloud. And here it will list profiles created for that particular aircraft, the Cessna 152, by users. My profile is obviously under the name Simhanger, and to get a profile, simply click on Import tab. It'll ask you if you're sure, click Yes, and it's now your default profile for that aircraft type. Now the profile for the Cessna 152 can also be used with other aircraft of a similar size, single prop obviously, and there's an easy way that we can link one profile to multiple different types of aircraft. Let's say, for example, I also want to link it to the Cessna 172 Skyhawk. Well, that's easy to do. I exit my flight, choose the aircraft. We'll stay at Valdez Airport, and we're now in the 172. I now have two simple options. I can make minor adjustments and keep it as a separate profile, or I can link it to my 152 profile. Currently, as you can see, it's using the default. To link it to one of your existing profiles is dead easy. 
Under Link to Profile, select the most suitable profile. Mine, if you remember, was the 152. I've selected that and now click Link. And it shows the active profile there as the Asobo 152 profile. And we can see under the individual settings, they're exactly as we had for the 152. Let's now give it a test. Note the movement as we started the engine and the vibration as we increase the throttle. I've flown the 152 in the real world and this is exactly how it moves. I think this is one of the handcrafted airports and I think there's a mesh problem here. A sobo, you need to look at this. You can hear the increased wind from the flaps and we're going to look at the touchdown vibrations and after that you'll hear the brakes. Goodness, that's so realistic. That really does enhance the immersion. Let's now quickly try that in VR. Rapidly putting in flaps, emergency landing. Because of the way FS Realistic gives you access to different profiles, when you search in the cloud it will only give you profiles for the aircraft you're actually flying. To gain access to the SimHanger profiles you do need to load that particular aircraft, as per this list. You can then copy that and link it, or copy and modify it to other aircraft as needed. And of course it's not just my profiles, there's a ton of good profiles out there already, and it's growing by the day. If you know of or have created a profile, don't forget to mention it in the comments below. To share one of your profiles, well, you must have it loaded, and then click on the Share This Profile. Enter your name or gamer tag, plus any general comments, and it's uploaded to the cloud. For those wanting to use the butt kicker with this application and using my profiles, please note that you would need to turn up the sound between 25 and 40% to get the desired effect. Once you're happy with a couple of the fundamental profiles, covering single prop, twin prop, etc., it's then quick and easy to copy that profile, make minor adjustments that just takes a minute or two, and you've now got a bespoke profile for your aircraft. Starting from scratch for each aircraft and creating a profile, well, life's too short for that. If you want to get your money's worth out of FS Realistic, well, you have to invest a little bit of time. But once you do, well, the rewards are there for the taking. In my opinion, the benefits and realism and immersion of FS Realistic really come alive when you use it in VR or you use it with some head tracker. If you are using it in VR, turn the turbulence motion down and turn breathing off. It makes a massive difference. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you found this useful and informative. 
If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give a thumbs up. It helps the channel. And if you'd like to express your thanks financially, there's a PayPal link in the description below or hit the super thanks button below this video. This helps me continue to create content for you in the future. Thank you. Look after yourselves. I'll see you again soon and bye for now.